Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about hex crawls and point crawls, what the similarities are, what the differences are, why we might use one over the other. So I'm going to start with hex crawls. If we go all the way back to original Dungeons and Dragons with book number three, The Underworld and Wilderness Adventures, we can see that they recommend that the dungeon master use another game, which is one of the funny things about original Dungeons and Dragons, a game called Outdoor Survival. It recommends you use the map from that. This map is a series of hexes with different terrain drawn on them. And in the game itself, you're moving around trying to get off the board. Here, they talk about the idea that a group of adventurers on foot might move three hexes a day, on horse, five hexes, etc. And you use this to kind of navigate around, kind of game board style, mix things nice and simple. This is now, of course, going back to a wargaming thing. We see in original Dungeons and Dragons that much of the movement distance and stuff is in inches. So other people may have just had a board out on their table or been playing on the kitchen table or whatever, put some you know green paper around for forest and stuff and just use the measuring tape. You can move five inches and you know five inches represents a day's travel or whatever. So there's lots of different ways to do it. The hex was, an, uh, was a simple way to kind of track movement, keep things really simple. People were used to board games, moving around the party, nice and easy. What a hex crawl ends up becoming is a form of exploration, which was a big factor in early D&D. You're at the edge, you're at the borderlands, as they say, right? And you're traveling out into unknown wilderness looking for deserted and ancient ruins that are full of gold, right? So that's kind of what we're looking for there. And this is your classic hex crawl. To this day, people use hexes to move around on the outdoor maps. It makes a life a lot easier. You can kind of move yourself around. And it's, it's not only as a caught on, it's become kind of the standard, I would say. But there is another thing something called a point crawl. What we're looking at here is the map from an adventure called Slumbering Ursine Dunes. And what we can see here is there's no hexes, right? But we have a bunch of different locations, all numbered, and they have little circles on it, and they have little lines connecting them together. This is a point crawl. In a point crawl, you're generally setting yourself up so that when you enter into a certain location, like let's say here, location one, you have three options. You can go back to the beginning, you can go into area two, or you can go into three. When you go into four, you can go back to two or over to 11 or over to nine or over to six. And you just kind of move around using those routes. Now, there's usually an in-world reason why you can't just go wherever you want here, right? Why you got to follow these paths. In this particular adventure, there's these giant sand dunes that are just very difficult to traverse. Now, it does say, of course, you could fly over them, you could levitate, you know, you could try to climb over them, but it's just going to be a lot harder than following the paths. Whereas in a hex crawl, generally, unless you reach a, you know, mountains or a, a crevasse or something that you can't cross, generally you're free to go in any direction. Hex crawls are very open-ended and, in my opinion, best for the kind of exploration that you do when you're not really sure what's out there. And when I say you're not really sure what's out there, I mean the general populace, right? In, in, in the case of a point crawl, you may come into a location and the PCs don't know anything about these locations. But generally, the people that live there do, right? In the example I showed you where you've got all these bubbles, if you're in a bubble that's connected with only two ways in and out, you probably have a good idea of what's on the other side. You may not know exactly what's there. You may not be friendly what's there, but you got an idea. Oh, yeah, if you go down that path, that leads to the witch's cottage. Be careful, right? With a hex crawl, it's kind of like if you head north, you might run into the witch's cottage. It's less exacting. All right, so I spoke about outdoor survival and kind of the origin of hex crawls, but here's... A more modern hex crawl, if you will. I'm not sure if this will still be available. I'll check Drive Through RPG, and if it is, I'll put a link there. This is from the original Wormskin magazines, which were setting up the location of, or the world of, I guess, Dolmenwood, which is the setting for OSE, right? So if you, uh, I'll put links to all this stuff in the description if you don't know what all those things are. But anyways, this is two different issues of them. In the first issue, you get the full map, which you see to the left, with a bunch of kind of stuff. And then the right, it starts talking about the areas. And you can see this is very common here. We have what's called a key. So if we look at our map, we can see here this Mance of Lord Malbleet is in, you know, uh, section 0709. Just to the left and down of that is 0609. And if we look to the right here, we can see what's in there. An old path leads northwest into the forest from a western road of Lankshore. Those who follow the path about a mile into the tangled wood come upon a pine, blah, 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 blah. So basically, in a hex, you're going to have a general idea of what's in the hex. It's not going to be a full description. It's not like you're in a dungeon room, right? And it's like, this is exactly what's in the room. It's something you may encounter when you enter the hex. The hexes, depending on the system you're using, are usually 
somewhere in the vicinity of like five or six miles across. So when crossing the hex, you may or may not run into this thing. Typically, you're going to use a random generator to see what you run into when you're traveling. And let's talk about that. So when you're in a dungeon, it's not uncommon to use something called wandering monsters or random monsters, where like you're traveling from room to room, typically in the hallways, right? And you you spend some time out there, the dungeon master rolls, and they say, oh, there's an encounter, they roll, and maybe you run into a wandering band of goblins who happen to also be in that area. This, the same thing is true for hex crawls and point crawls. The main difference, at least how I generally set them up, is that a point crawl will usually have fewer options. Because if you think about it, if there's only one path going between this village and the witch's hut, there's probably only a limited amount of things that could possibly be on that path, right? Things that go on the path regularly, certain animals that are in the area, maybe the witch herself, maybe people coming there to buy potions. You're going to have stuff that's very specific to those two locations is what you're going to encounter. In hex crawl, it's going to be based on the geography, right? If you're in a mountainous hex, you're going to run into things that dwell in the mountains, not necessarily things that dwell in the cavern that you're looking for that has the treasure, right? It's just, it's a mountain, there's mountain lions, there's eagles, there's dragons, whatever's in a mountain, right? And this is what you're going to find in that hex. It's not going to necessarily be related. That is not to say that it has to be related with the point crawl, but typically I think it makes more sense that way. And what you're going to end up with is if I did a whole hex map, I might have five different tables, one for the, the woods, one for the mountains, one for the hills, one for the grasslands. And no matter where I am on this general hex map, if I'm in grasslands, I roll on the grasslands hex. If I'm doing a point crawl, I would generally have my random or you know, wandering encounters based on the road that I'm on, the connector, okay? I mean, some of the stuff's going to overlap, obviously. If five things connect to a single village, all five of those routes will probably have villagers from there, right? But not all of them will have the witch because she basically hangs out where she lives. So this is kind of the difference between the two. I think of point crawls more like a dungeon outside. And if you remember, I did a video about that wilderness... Uh, the Weird and Wild, where you create basically what they call a wilderness dungeon. That's effectively a point crawl, but on a small scale. You are traveling from location to location within an outdoor environment the same way you would in a dungeon, and you develop point crawls the same way, with looping patterns and factions and things like that. Hex crawls are generally much more open-ended. Now, in a hex, there's going to be stuff. You may have a layer of bugbears in the hex. You may have a raging river that's hard to cross. You may have some kind of giant pit that's full of vipers and also gold. And all of these things are in the hex somewhere. You don't even necessarily have to say exactly where they are. You just know they're in the hex. And you're rolling to see what the party might encounter. Once you place it, then you need to make sure that you keep track of that, right? So if they're in the northeast corner of that hex and they run into that pit full of vipers and gold, they should be able to go back to the northeast corner later and find that same pit. It shouldn't now be in the southeast. That wouldn't make sense. But... When you're first making your hex map, all the the key has to say is what's generally in the hex. And you can place things in the path of the PCs based on random rolls. Okay, so I'm going to break down the differences and similarities in categories effectively. So that was random encounters, right? Now we're going to talk about travel. So again, a point crawl is generally going to have a certain number of routes from one location to the other. And... Not following those routes is usually off the table unless you've got special equipment or you want to take a long time or you're willing to take a massive risk. In a hex crawl, the opposite is true. You could go anywhere, which means that you add another factor to the puzzle, which is you can be lost in a hex crawl. When you say, I want to head northeast to the grasslands, the referee, GM, dungeon master, is going to roll randomly to see if you are able to stay on point, on direction. And if not, you can wander. In a point crawl, that is not the situation, right? It's like, I'm going to follow the path to the witch's cabin. Okay, you get there, right? You get there in a fixed amount of time. You know how far away it is. You know, as far as the DM is concerned, you have all that figured out. In a hex crawl, it might take, you might say, villagers might tell you, well, it'll take four days across the grasslands to get to the next village. But if you get lost to keep going around circles, it might take you a week. So the idea of the hex crawl is it's a little bit more open-ended, a little bit more random, chances of being lost, Chances of running into something that you wouldn't have expected, right? Because the villagers might tell you, beware when you're heading to go see the witch, on that path, there is a pack of wolves that hunt, right? If I said that about a five-mile hex, which encompasses whatever how many square miles, okay, so there's wolves. What does that mean to me? But if I know I'm going up a path and there's typically wolves there, 
I'm going to be on alert. So this connects us to the idea of rumors and knowledge. So again, if you're playing a Borderlands type campaign where you're at this like village and then people go off and wander into the wilderness looking for lost treasure, the villagers might have some vague rumors. Oh yes, this wizard went off five years ago into the woods. They say he built a tower out there and that kind of stuff, right? The rumors are going to be a little bit more kind of do they make sense? Is it just somebody who was passing through said something? What do we really know? They might be really ancient. But if it's a point crawl, usually the paths are going to be fairly well trod, right? So we're going to know, again, that the witch is up there because people go up there to buy potions from her, or, you know, love potions and stuff all the time. So we know, well, the witch is there. Somebody was up there two days ago and, you know, she wasn't in a good mood. You might want to bring her some, you know, a box of chocolates or something. I mean, who knows? And you can basically get a little bit more specific rumors. And those rumors could be very wrong. Okay, so let's talk about why we might explore as PCs an area. Again, I keep dropping back to the Borderlands idea, but that's generally what a hex crawl is. A hex crawl is kind of like, okay, you might even know there's a kingdom 30 miles to the east, but there's no good path there. So the party that's hex crawling is either trying to blaze a trail or exploring to see what's in there, unknown things, treasures that have never been recovered, stuff like that. That's what you're doing. It's more of an open-ended exploration when you're hex crawling. Point crawls, and again, you might hex crawl to get to a point crawl. Point crawls to me are a lot more like dungeons. Once you're in that area, you know, it's like we're going to go to the Ursine Dunes because we want to meet with the with the elves there that know about the secrets of the stars that will help us get to, that's probably not actually part of the module. It's been a while since I've read it. But anyways, this is why you're going. So then you're still going to be ad adventuring and wandering and entering into different areas and talking to people, but you got a little bit of a reason to be there. Usually, this is not always the case, but again, you're entering into a place that is well trodden. It's got roads or paths or connections between nodes of adventure, effectively, right? So clearly somebody's been traveling. Clearly there are connections there, even if they're ancient. And so the reason to be there is a lot more like being in a dungeon to me. To me, I treat point crawls exactly like that. Point crawls are like dungeons. You've got an idea. You're going to investigate this new land. It's got roads. It's really well established. We'll talk about roads in a second. And this is why we are there, very specifically to explore it. Hex crawl is kind of just like, we're hitting out into the field. Let's see what's there. Now, let's talk about roads for a second. Roads, in a sense, can turn your hex crawl into a point crawl. A point crawl that doesn't really have the restrictions of you can't leave the roads, but a point crawl where you can use some of those same ideas, right? This village is connected to that village with the road. They're going to have much more specific knowledge. You may even see somebody in the village you're in that's from the other village or that's traveling there soon and wants you to bring a message or can, you know, hire you to guard the their, their goods as they go back or protect you as you go back because they know how to get there. But you can still slip off the road, right? You can still go off the points. So if you like the idea of a little bit of a, a tighter thing, you don't just want like what I'm going to call like random kind of exploration, you can create an area, a hex area that has roads and combine the two ideas. Because that will allow the players to slip off the roads if they want and do some more exploration than a point crawl will. That's not to say a point crawl isn't a great way to go. It's really useful when you've got something more specific on in mind. A point crawl is going to allow you to kind of capture the big scenes, if you will. Just listening to a podcast the other day, and that was one of the things a caller said was, you know, they in their games, they like this idea that you know, you, you forget about the kind of the travel, the middle part. It's like, oh, you travel, whatever, a couple days go by, and then there's a scene. A point crawl is much more set up for that because you just know when you're in this town, it's going to take you two days to get to that one. There's maybe a chance of something happening on the road, but basically, you know where you're going. And hex crawl, you don't always know. It's open-ended. You can end up anywhere. You need to be prepared. Things like resource management are super important. And if you like that kind of game, if you like that open-endedness, the hex crawl can be really powerful. So what we're really looking at here is just two ways to traverse the wilderness. The hex crawl, which again, could be done without hexes and just using a ruler. You know, you move X number of inches per day. And the point crawl. One is more gritty details, randomness, more kind of this might not go any way that anybody at the table, including the referee knows. And the point crawls a little bit more like a dungeon. It's got some control. You've got, you can plan better for it. You know, it's two days travel from here to there. People travel all the time. You can even wait for the next group to come. You may have got word from one place to the other, but 
At the same time, you're not just going to randomly go off course. So you've got a little bit more of a tighter situation. If you haven't done a lot of wilderness adventures and you want to create something that's in the wilderness, sometimes a point crawl can be really useful to you because all you really need to do is create your main locations and then a small random encounter list that could possibly happen between each of them and you're good to go. You're going to know, okay, they can if they want to get to village number three, they've got to go through village number one and two. It, it's kind of five room dungeony. It allows you a little more control. I, I'm not saying it needs to be a railroad, but the idea is that you kind of have a little bit more of an, of an idea of where it's going to go. Whereas a hex crawl, you're going to need to be a little bit more, let's say, faster on your feet because you can't plan for everything. You're going to have to just have all kinds of lists, all kinds of stuff spread out. You could have the players go completely off in the wrong direction. You're not even thinking about it. Next thing you know, you were planning for them to go to this town, but then they got lost crossing the grasslands, which is really hard to do. And they end up in the hex that has a dungeon that you weren't even thinking they'd go to. They didn't have even rumors about it yet. And now all of a sudden you roll it up randomly and they come upon this uh, this burial mound that the door smashed open and the party's like, let's adventure. And you got to be ready for it. So this is really the difference. The point crawl gives you a little bit more control, creates a little bit more of a cinematic scene type of uh, adventure, whereas the hex crawl is going to be much more about gritty exploration, what's going to happen, a little bit more on your toes, moving around, changing things up. What's better or worse? Neither. They're both great. You can mix them together. I use both all the time. I'd love to know what you guys use. Do you Have you guys played any of the stuff in Dolman Wood or in... Uh, uh, slumbering or assigned dunes have you used point crawls a lot have you used hex crawls how do you travel across the wilderness do you just narrate it i've talked about that before too i would love to know talk to me in the comments below leave a message and uh if you haven't already subscribed ring the bell and all that goodness i'll see you next time